What's up everybody, put on your best pair of dress undies and shave off that nasty mustache because it's time for another episode of the Nubus Podcast. This week we're going to be talking about Dragon Age, hated games, and bloat versus quality content. And before we get started, I just want to tell you guys about a special promotion that the Nubus.com is holding. Just for this week, for every new user that visits our website, Nubus.com, we'll be donating a dollar to the Humberto Cabbage Patch Fund for men with very silly names. Now, if you have a name that you hate, or even a slightly detestable middle initial that you're not very fond of, please find it in your heart to support this noble cause and throw our website a few clicks. I'm Jeremy, I'll be your host this week, and I'm joined by regulars Laura and Eric. Say hello. Hey. Eric, say hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so let's just get into the thick of it. First topic we're going to be talking about is David Gator, former lead writer of the Dragon Age series, leaves Bioware. Um, now, uh, I personally don't know much about David Gator. I can read his list of writings. He's written uh, all for Bioware specifically. He's written um, or at least been a part of the writing staff for all of the Dragon Age games. So Dragon Age Origins, uh, the expansion Awakening, Dragon Age 2, Dragon Age Inquisition, as well as um, Knights of the Royal Republic and some of the old Baldur's Gate games. Now, um, while I'm not specifically interested in David Gator, I'm more interested in what he represents and kind of the the evolution of uh, the writing quality in specifically the Dragon Age games. Um, but you can make... Uh, I would make an argument for the uh, all of the Bioware games in general has uh, kind of been going downhill and I know I may not be in the minority of it but I, I don't have a very uh, popular opinion about that because my favorite is Origins I hated too and I also hated Inquisition um, so and I know Laura you, you're a big fan of the Dragon Age games uh, um, yes Yes, yes, I am. This, this, this will be this will be a very interesting conversation. This will so be very I... fun. So the, the the summary of my argument is that I I think Dragon Age Origins was a very well written game. That it was overall just a very good game. Uh, Dragon Age Two took some steps back. It was really oddly paced, and uh, there were, the area restrictions were pretty stupid that this, the same areas are copy pasted all over the place. I don't know. It just felt lazy and it didn't make much sense. And I felt similarly about Inquisition where I did not like the main storyline. I thought it was like duct taped together and the pieces didn't really fit and that there was too much bloat and that there wasn't a lot of quality content. It was mostly like fetch quests and stuff I didn't really care about, and that it felt like a bunch of pieces that didn't fit together that were thrown in the same game. So, what, what's your take on the Dragon Age series in general? Okay, so as far as most kind of Dragon Age fans will attest to, two doesn't exist. <laughs> two was unbearably bad. And, you know, I'll put into a bit of context kind of my love my love affair with kind of the Dragon Age series is as strong as my love of New Vegas. And by that, I mean, I have played it on pretty much every system for an unspeakable amount of hours that could hardly be considered healthy. So I have a very kind of. I am kind of well into the lore, well into everything about the series. I don't agree, and I will fight you about Inquisition. Um, I didn't feel like it was very fetch questy, and I actually thought they had some very brilliant things about Inquisition in terms of the UI and the character conversations and stuff that was really unique and stuff that I felt was really brilliant. Um, but 2 is a pile of crap. Yes, Definitely. I agree. 
Two sucks. Two, uh. two was a pile. Two, two was a pile of crap. Um, Dragon Age and Dragon Age Origins um, were, you know, they've aged very well. I played them. I played them very recently, and they've aged spectacularly well in terms of their writing and in terms of their gameplay. So, I guess what's really interesting about it is the fact that he's leaving behind such a legacy to obviously go and work on other things, but it's obviously stemming from some level of unhappiness. I don't think Inquisition was all that it could be in terms of kind of writing and scale. It was definitely the most linear out of all the Dragon Age games. You know, it was very much kind of plot point, plot point, plot point. You know? Yeah. There wasn't much in terms of suspense to be left to the end or at least there was stuff that took you by surprise even in the little bits of the storytelling particularly in one where you're interacting with people and you're not really too sure how it's going to pan out and then suddenly bam surprise midway through i felt the inquisition had some of that but not a huge amount um and i think that that's why he's leaving i don't think he got to fill as much story in as he would like to have had which is which is kind of sad i mean it's it's definitely sad for the series do i think that the series will continue to live on regardless of it yes definitely. i mean it's the same as moffat leaving who right you know as sad as it is to have such a key kind of loss it will be interesting to see where it picks up from from a new direction yeah because it... at least at least with Inquisition, they um, they have left it at such a point in the series where they can just kind of, they can leave it at that or they can move on to something else entirely. You mean you move know. on to another, move on to another storyline? Yeah, I mean, okay. they, don't, they don't necessarily have to continue with the kind of, because all of the bookends kind of made sense. Okay, sure, you don't get any resolution with Solus at the end unless you played the expansion, which didn't really fill much gaps in anyway but yeah. there is room for there to be another two if that makes sense where you know not for obviously not for something really bad but something different where they yeah. can try something else with the series and maybe make it work better this time because in theory two was good it was just a pile of crap. It was... I've, I've heard the argument made a bunch of times, and I, I think if I replayed 2, I might change my opinion on it. But I, I've heard that pe- people say that it failed as a Dragon Age game, but as generic fantasy sword game, that it's fine. Um, but I went into it just having played Origins, and I fucking loved Origins. I played it like six times in a row. Um, and then... I, I got two the day it came out, and I was like, this is totally different and much worse than the first one. Um, so I, I think just by ha- virtue of having the Dragon Age name, it, it, gets more, uh, it gets more shit than maybe it deserves. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, again, I'd have to play it again to really figure it out. But um, I, I don't blame them for trying to do something different. I, I blame them for trying to do something lazy. In that, I I think that Origins was smart, not just in its its game design. Now, no, the combat is a little clunky. Like it's so mage focused um, that if you don't have two mages in your party, it's very magic focused, yeah, and yeah. you need two mages in your party not to do well, but you'll destroy everything with two mages. Um, and while that isn't brilliantly designed, everything else about it felt. Okay, the narrative is what I appreciate most in it. Um, that everything made sense and it was yeah, trying to... I mean, s- I mean, they were trying to tell a story and it's one of the rare cases where I was interested in the story in terms of how it played out and particularly yeah. the whole fact that, you know, they're exiled and they're trying to start again because they're broke and they need to do a lot of dodgy shit to yeah. get to where they're going and... All of that narrative is good and intriguing and engaging, but that, you know, that alone is not, is, you know, it's something that we learned. It's not something that you can actually, it's a good foundation, but if the rest of the mechanics are brutal, then 
you don't then there's nothing else going for it see that's i i think that it was a game carried by its story and everything else functioned well enough and that the 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 narrative was good enough and the world was well built uh and the characters were built well enough that it kind of carried the the sort of clunky uh combat along with it because the combat was at service of the story i was able to appreciate the the combat not more but i i wasn't as critical of it because it was at service at the service of something greater but i didn't get that feeling from either two or inquisition especially two where like it, it was just quick combat at the service of like a lazy story and i did like the um the canary story at the beginning of two i thought that was okay as its own story not as like the first act of a three-act story because that that entire uh plot line it felt like they had two stories they told uh, they, they they shoved two stories into a three-act plot line it was like the first act was Kunari. Second act was uh, I don't even remember. They went down in the cave or something, and then yeah, third yeah. act was mages versus templars. And they're like, no, that was the whole thing, and it was just muddled and confusing. And then the gameplay was dumb. It it wasn't trying to be strategic. And it was just hit swords and action button and endless waves of enemies. Like there, it wasn't thoughtful, and it wasn't even ambitious. It just seemed lazy. Um, I mean, I think that it's an interesting problem because how I feel about 2 is how I feel about Fallout 4, except it's an opposite problem where at least the storyline kept me going, where in Fallout 4, everything is so action-focused and everything is so heavy that I got to a certain point within Fallout 4 where... You know, the big reveal happened, and I have, I quite literally, since that podcast went up, which I think was either the first or the second podcast, yeah. I have not picked it up since. <laughs> and because I've no, I've no desire to pick it up, I was getting through the mechanics of it and how kind of gun-heavy it is, because, like, I was always a melee person. You know, I always play kind of, you know, bruisers, and I always play kind of melee characters when i do rpgs that's just i don't i don't ever go kind of mage or anything like that same with kind of weapons gun wise i'm just not that kind of rpg and it's something that i really found is sort of the opposite problem where at least in two it kept me engaged enough that i just put up with it for fallout 4 i got to the mid bit and you know it's definitely one of the times that i can say that in a series i have actually put a Fallout game down yeah, because of it. And I haven't had that experience with any of the Dragon Age ones, regardless of how kind of difficult or tedious the combating and yeah. the quest systems have been. You know, questionable as, you know, because, you know, Dragon Age isn't flawless. You know? No, it's not. It's And, you know, so it's... But it's about balance. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not Bioware will create another Fallout 4 where they'll just put everything that they think that will really kind of sell, you know, into a Dragon yeah. Age game. Because, let's let's face it, Inquisition had a bit of that with crafting systems and developing your, you know, your castle and stuff like that and changing curtains and shit like that, yeah. which it's like, I nobody, didn't appreciate. No one going, cares. Yeah, and having to go to the same fucking lady to go and talk about the same a quest every single time you wanted to do a quest rather than just selecting it from the menu. And having the, like, um, the, the, I, I don't remember what it was called, like the war assets table. Where, oh, the war room. Yeah, yeah, where you'd set it and like, uh, in 18 hours, come back and you'll get these things. It yeah. felt like I was playing a mobile game where, yeah. it, but the, the microtransaction part was missing. It was like, why is this in here? This is stupid. I don't want to do this. It's, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't I make mean, any sense. Yeah, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. It definitely has its flaws. But, you know, and that's one of the reasons, I suppose, why Inquisition was so polarizing was because of the things it tried to change. But at least as a series, it's not afraid 
to try things to see yeah. if it works which is the reason why i guess i'm not too worried about what will happen next because they don't generally stick with the same formula all the time and i think that's good for a series and i i am worried uh i think we will see an indication of where they're gonna head with uh mass effect and um because I feel like the company as a whole has taken a different approach, and you can see you you can see a very clear change in vision um, from what they were making you know fifteen ten years ago. If you compare like a Knights of the Old Republic or even a Mass Effect One to a Mass Effect Three or a Dragon Age Inquisition, you had uh, at first they were very, the, the games were pretty clunky, like they were not user friendly at all, and they were like D and D spinoffs where they were still based on dice rolls and. Uh, like critical chance hits, and they were very story first, almost uh, an approachability second, where they made kind of these, not dense, but um, really intricate, sometimes uh, clunky systems and games that there was so much going on, and it, I didn't feel like it was clutter, but now they've taken a more action-oriented uh, approach, it seems to me, and a more generalist approach and that they're trying to make it appeal to more people but in effect they're dumbing down the content they had before and as someone who really liked those I, my favorite mass effect my favorite mass effect game was the first one even though the combat is fucking atrocious uh, i fully acknowledge that but uh the the worlds that they built the uh, the characters that they wrote and all the lore it felt like a world and it didn't feel like it was a world at the service of action and it, they primarily focused on building a universe that I wanted to be a part of not just oh uh, here's an excuse to shoot things um, and my my problem with Inquisition specifically is that I don't it it it, it felt like just a bunch of pieces taped together and I didn't know what the point was I I didn't feel like there was I don't know like one cohesive vision behind it like all the main story missions felt like you could shuffle them up and put them back in in a different order and that it wouldn't lose any of the coherence and that all the things that they made uh, to tie together to different main story missions were totally arbitrary and didn't hold any I impact over the next I, like story mission i wouldn't call it arbitrary i think arbitrary might be a bit harsh i definitely do agree in terms of the shuffle that you're talking about in terms of plot points and storylines and the direction in which it was headed but that is i guess in many ways probably design deliberate because you do decide fraction wise where you're going to go fairly early in the game you know, whether or not you're going to side with the Templars or whether or not you're going to side with the Mages. And that dictates a lot of the routes you go through as a result, you know? So definitely, and I'm and I'm somebody who played, like, who went through both, you know, played it a couple of times and okay. made sure I got the cohesive picture. And definitely there is a lot of slotting of kind yeah. of different kind of quest lines in different orders that kind of lead you towards you know, a greater sense. I don't really... I guess I'm sort of 50-50 on your comment about kind of the whole never really feeling like there was an ultimate goal. Yeah. Um, Because, I'm, and I will be the first one to say it, it felt pretty rushed. Yes. Especially the ending. It, it, it just yeah. felt like, they're like, oh, we need a final battle with big bad guy. Uh, okay, yeah. here you go. And I was like, what? I don't care, like, I didn't care about anything that was happening the whole game, and then, me, <laughs> that was really harsh, but, like, I didn't care about the story, I don't care about the villain, I, I don't know anything about the villain, all I know is he, he is scary, uh, man who went to God's town and made everything bad, and that we should kill him. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, that is pretty much all the context we ever he get about sucked. it. He's, some, he's somebody who can summon a blight. Yeah. Oh, okay, but don't, this is why we found Grey Wardens. Um, yeah, and this, this is and... why we found that, uh, you know, the dude who was a Grey Warden who turned out not to be a Grey Warden, and then we actually found the real Grey Wardens, yeah. and 
<laughs> you know, th- things get very contrived very quickly. Yeah. And and, I, and it wasn't, I can't excuse it as going, oh, well, they were trying this other thing and uh, the main story fell. It was like everything else felt so piecemeal that I was like, where, what were they doing? What, what was the vision behind it? I think it definitely suffers from overcomplication. Yes, I because completely agree. I definitely think that in terms of Alistair and Mor- and Morrigan, they def- you know, there was so much hype leading up to it, right? And I understand they're iconic. I get it, okay? I do. But coming as a fan of the series, somebody who deeply, deeply loves these games and this series, you could have left them out and we would have been there would have been no loss because of it. Flemeth and Morrigan don't serve that big of a purpose in Inquisition. And that is like yeah. blasphemous, right? Um, and I understand it's blasphemous, but it's true. You get to the Sacred Fountain, you make a choice. Flemeth arrives anyway. Like, why Why did you need to tie them in? I understand they're ancients and that this whole series is about ancients and dragons and all the rest, right? Because people like them and they're in the first one. So therefore, you have sell. to put them in the other you know. ones. Yeah, no, I know. I get it. I get it. It'll sell. You know, right. I do. I get it. It'll, you know, I do. I get it. But the way they were integrated in felt so wishy-washy like I, yeah they spent so little time and it was like i i distinctly remember it that it was like the third trophy you got before you finished the end so you basic you may have had max about two hours of story time at most developing why they were there and what they were doing and then you got to the end and morgan's pissed off again and that's all you really figure out and they're just like so she just came in told you some shit and left again. Yeah, like, it that's... didn't it didn't need to be mooring in. And I I completely agree with you. They were they were <clears throat> I believe they're just in there because people like origins and then they see, "Oh, Morgan and Alistair. I remember them. Maybe it'll yeah. be like that one." It's yeah. it's it's like a it's a it's a loose attempt to to tie the series together. And the <clears> thing, <throat> you know, it's somewhat interesting about the fact that you know, the whole point with Solace and Bad Wolf and and all the rest, right? That there is a tie-in there, but why not have that big reveal for Solace? <coughs> and why why do you need to include Flemeth and Morgan in that? Because then surely that could have been a counterforce later on, and a really interesting plot development, but that's why Morgan's there. Yeah. To find bad wolf why not that yeah why not have that be the thing that pushes the story forward like in origins the main villain you had two villains you had Terran logan and you had the archdemon and the archdemon was big bad guy gonna kill everything but he wasn't the interesting villain Terran logan was the interesting villain he was the one that we cared about he was the motherfucker that you wanted to get and he was good because he he had motivations that you understood. He was a person first. He was a character. The Archdemon was just bad guy. And if that's all you have, then it's boring. But if it's something in the background to just kind of keep you going, totally fine. And if that's what Corinthius or Corinthians or Cornopolis, whatever, I don't remember his name. If that's what he was, if he was at service of something greater, then I could just excuse him. But there was nothing else. He was it. And if yeah. they if they put the soulless Flemeth story, if that was the thing driving the story forward, and if they had th- little threads tying together uh, to tie those um, yeah, like I story found... missions together, the game would be so much better. But they don't have that, and that's yeah. I mean, about. I found the whole mirrors thing and the whole you know, like how Morgan you know manages to shimmy round and escape all of these people who are trying to haunt her because she's a witch of the waste or witch of the waste. Which is like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you guys all know what I'm talking about anyway. Bar Eric from Eric. But... Bar, bar from we'll Eric, move on soon. 
He was sitting there very silently going, I have no idea what any of we'll, you are talking we'll, about. Uh, we'll end his boredom soon. Indeed. It's interesting, Indeed. though. <laughs> um, but how she escapes all of these people kind of wanting to hunt her for her power is going through all of these alternative portals, which is a hell of a lot more interesting than what's going on presently. Right, and then, but it's only in there for one mission. It's like, oh, I heard about these portals. And then at the end, they like blow it up. And like, oh, it let's, oh, the portal just led us to some magic crystal and you're like wait those didn't have anything to do with each other you just erase the the relevance of the of the the, the mirrors in one mission yeah in one foul swoop and yeah. that was it and it was like why is this here this serves no purpose other than the context context of the mission the missions don't play with each other at all they're just like separate pieces that they sort of made work together I mean, it would have made a lot more sense if they had... It's like... it's definite, It definitely feels like, in terms of writing, that they had this core idea, and then other people came up with better ideas as they were going through development. And they were just like, oh, we'll stick this in. Oh, we'll stick this in. Yeah. We'll stick this in. Which made, you know... It's funny how, while you're resolving a main conflict... You know, while I get that there's always something bigger in the background and it's never really the true objective, that, you know, that you never want it to be more interesting than what you're trying to do Yeah. in the beginning, right? And that all the reasons why I love Inquisition is for all of the little things, not the main plot point. I couldn't give a shit. Yeah. You know, about the main plot point. It was all of the development. It was all of the building up. But I don't think I'm ever going to go back to my Inquisitor, which no. is really sad. You know, because I do think that there is a lot more real estate there, but it's how are you going to do it is the real trick. What do you mean? Um, I don't think that my particular Inquisitor is sort of, is done in that world, in that space, given all of the timelines and all of the, you know, unresolved threads. Okay that are in there so they could definitely get another game out of it i just don't think that they will no i don't think they should either <laughs> well no but i i do think that there is you know there there are stories left to be told in it but i don't necessarily think that they will go back and tell it which no i i hope which, they do something which, else yeah which i don't think which oh which i don't ultimately think will be a loss but i do think that they will you know, they will probably come back to something like it where it'll be a tie-in like the rest and then we'll finally... I just really hope that overall that there is some overarching narrative that they are pulling from, from the feeling that we are getting to a resolution. Because one of the things I really hate about these series of games is, well, about ser these, you know, these series, any kind of serialised game is that they tend to not have a finishing point yeah that they're that um they they're they're self that they keep going not yeah. because of a story there's no reason in the context of the universe why the story should keep going it's yeah they keep making them because people want to keep buying them so then it just makes not them because feel... there is anything actually there left yeah which really annoys me i mean it's one of the things it's one of the things about gta that bothers me is that we're on gta what five now yeah. And I understand each story is different and self-contained and stuff like that, but why have it serialized? Uh, it's, well, one the, it's, it's one of the things that bothers me. Okay, about, I, just about kind of serialization in general. Uh, I kind of disagree yeah. with you there. If if something has separate, um, like if you have a, a distinct universe and then you have completely different stories within that universe, but you use the same branding, I'm okay with that. I don't mind that at all. I, I mean, like when I I'm more just the serialization that I have a problem with. I've got no, I've got no issue with it being under the same brand or the same name, but just you know that they I have suppose... to tie the entries together. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I understand that. I mean, like have them stand alone. I mean, it's one of the things yes. I don't okay, like I about kind of the numerical system that Final Fantasy has, because you know they don't. It's not a series, it's a set of stories. Yeah. You know, it, but this is the reason why the Tales series have Tales of, and then whatever title the actual game is, Zillia, yeah. or Symphonia, or whatever, has no link with each other. You don't need yeah. to play the others to play the first. Same with right. GTA, same with Final Fantasy, you know. 
The only kind of notable exception that I can think of off the top of my head was like Kingdom Hearts, is where you can't really go into two without knowing what happened in one. Yeah. While you can do it in Dragon Age, you can do it in Mass Effect to a certain degree. Yeah. Uh, Mass Effect, I don't know about that. Ah, uh, but... you can. I mean, you can follow <coughs> it. It'll just be yeah. different. Yeah, okay. Well, but I suppose that's the same for two in Kingdom Hearts as well. You could follow us, you'd just be very just confused. Be confused. You'd be confused. But um, anyway. Anyway, that's a random tangent about Whatever. Oh, you brought up Tales. I could go on about I just finished Azilia. Uh Oh, what did you think? What did you think? What did you think? Oh, I at the beginning I fucking loved it. I was like, Oh my god, this is great. This because I had just played Abyss a few months ago uh, for the oh, okay. second no, no, time. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Which storyline did you do? Uh Jude. Oh, okay. Um, but I had played Abyss a couple months ago for the second time, and I remember loving it the first time. And the second time, I was like, oh my god, this is terrible. I was like, this is the, like, it was a very simple story, but that they just hammering into you over and over and over, and they held your hand through the whole thing. And I was like, ah, it just frustrated Hell's me. games are meant to be played once, yeah. and only once. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie. I'm so sad you didn't play Mila's story first because Mila's story is so much better than Jude's. Is it? I, yeah. I, I just feel like the overarching story. If you had was told me, I would have told bad. you to play Mila's side first because Mila's side is so much more interesting than Jude. All you do with Jude is run around for ages. Yeah. That's all you do. Um, my problem with it was that the like, oh, it was like. It didn't follow this coherent story structure. I never knew what I was fighting for. It was like every I don't know halfway through you changed your vis- you changed your ultimate goal, and then they ch- ten more hours in they changed your ultimate goal again, and then they then again they changed the main villain, and it's like I don't know what I'm fighting for anymore. I was so thrown all over the place, and I was like, what what's happening? I don't know what's happening anymore in the screen, and then. Like I did, I started to not care about the characters anymore because so it didn't make any sense. How, so probably how Eric feels about our conversation, like right now. Right, <laughs> it's just like who? I don't care. I don't give a shit what these guys are talking about. But oh man, Celia really disappointed me in the end. It oh, was oh, it fell apart at the end. I, I or towards the middle, the like the first half, I was totally on board. I was like, this is great, and then. Oh. Just, I'm 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 so uh, sad I didn't tell you to play Mila's side first because it is so much better than Jude's. What's, oh man, it's different. Oh, like everything. Like, like you are talking about two pretty much completely separate sets of events. Like, I would, I would definitely encourage you. Like, hand on heart, plead with you. To forget about Jude's side and try to play it from Mila's and ignore, try to repress anything you've played on Jude's side. Because Jude's side is just a load of walking and just following while Mila's actually has a point. See, But my problem wasn't with Jude, because Jude and Mila, I could get behind his characters I don't know, just it was the storyline that didn't make any sense. It kept jumping all over the place and this it, is why you need to play Mila's side. Okay. Apps, apps. I promise you, everything else will make sense if you play Mila's storyline. See, that's another. I think they just should have made one game and not have it been two different. Like, why have two separate plot lines if they don't make sense independently, and if one is worse than the other? Just, just make one, make one thing, and make it a good game. Not, it, it's again. If there's, they're trying to make more content. They're trying to make a bloated thing. Out of, <clears throat> I would have preferred one shorter game rather than two long, confusing games. And that was another problem I had with Dragon Age. And just moving to this in general, because I know Eric, you don't care about Dragon Age or Tales or whatever. But is that I'm sick of playing games that just feel bloated that it's just like there's too much content but at the service of nothing so <coughs> how i felt in my entirety about witcher then okay i disagree with you i think there was that it was at the service of something or that the that the side quests in the witcher 
had a point to them. Like, I wasn't just find 10 mushrooms, deliver them to man. That they, they, they said something about the world. They said something about the people that live in these different areas. Or they said something about Geralt. And that I, I felt like I got something out of all the side quests or all the content in The Witcher. But equally, I could get behind in Dragon Age the fact that I'm gathering all of these resources and I'm looking for X, Y, and Z to to fuel an army. Yeah, but then that army is at the service of nothing. The, like, the, 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 the army is at service of the plot. Which, you know. And I hated the plot, so then I didn't care about anything. It was like, you, you, I needed to be engaged somewhere. In Inquisition... I didn't care about anything because everything was so loose to me. I was like, all right, the main plot sucks. Um, my character, I was, he's my, he's me, so he's not a character. I can't get behind him because he, he's an avatar for me. So I don't care about my main character, if that makes any sense. Like I would with, about Geralt because Geralt is a character. He's not an avatar. Yeah, but <clears throat> I could not get behind like... Geralt at all, and I and I've played okay. like the full Witcher series. I think ultimately my point comes from the same as you ish. I'm I do believe that there is too much filler, yeah, in games lately to prolong them for the sake of prolonging them, right? Rather than like I know that it's important to have to have side quests and stuff like that, but think of older RPGs. Think of Pokemon. Pokemon is a great example, right? There is lots of shit, alternative shit to do in Pokemon. Except, you know, that doesn't include the main quest. You can catch all the Pokemon, you can fill your Pokedex, you can battle in arenas, you can do whatever, 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 right? But the main quest of the story is become Pokemon champion. In a lot of cases, right? Defeat the bad guys, become champion. And that experience never feels bloated. Yeah. Because there's very little that gets in the way of that, except for <coughs> defeating the bad guys along the way. Right? So, But I think that comes down to good pacing and good storytelling. Yeah. And knowing exactly what... Like, Pokemon is very sure of itself and very sure of what it is. But that's probably because it's so old, right? And it's, and but, it's so gameplay-driven, too, yeah. that the story doesn't matter. You can, Story, I don't care. Like, all the... This the the story that they've been putting in the more recent Pokemon with the I don't know like the, the, yeah, the all the bad guys and the long, I mean, ancient yeah. crap. I'm like I don't care. Just let me fight. And yeah. that it's more of like I and I can ignore it. Like I don't have to pay attention to it most of the time. It's getting worse now. But um, is that the I gameplay think- comes first and it's more about uh, um, gameplay goals. It's about beating yeah. this guy leveling up your guys and that's inherently fun so you want to keep doing it yeah. and that the, like the weird side stuff is either at the service of gameplay or it's something that you can just skip entirely if you don't care yeah i think it's, it it, it's one of those things where <coughs> i think it's it's certainly symptomatic of where rpgs and stuff like that are heading in general anyway because you and it's also you know coming back to the topic that we often discuss on this podcast about you know value and the value of what we get for our money you see pokemon used to be exceptionally sure of what it was and i totally agree that it's beginning to lose its way ish with all of these kind of stuff that it thinks it needs to put in to keep it fresh and i do agree that does need a certain level of innovation to keep it fresh but it always has had a really good understanding of what it is and what it's trying to do while Dragon Age, you know, Fallout, stuff like that, are beginning to lose what... Lose their really essence. I- yeah, what really identifies them as being so successful in their own, you know, in their own thing. Right. And um, I- go ahead. And that's where you really need to think about kind of... Fine, six-hour experiences if condensed, you know, would be awesome. But you have to think about the experiences that are really shit that you get for six hours. I mean, yeah. 
you know, all you need to do is look at the order. You know. Yeah, I haven't and, played it, but I heard that it was just mostly cutscenes and there yeah. was no content. And you need to kind of, it, it's more symptomatic of what's wrong in terms of writing and pacing and not being completely sure from the get-go of what you want to achieve when you're creating a product, you know, that you want to sell. Because you need to be 100% sure of what you're trying to do in order for something to be good. Like Black yeah. Flag, Assassin's Creed, was good because it knew what it was selling and it knew what it wanted to achieve. Right. Syndicate did not know what it wanted to achieve. Oh, I heard Syndicate was good. Yeah, it, it's okay, but it still some it still suffers from, you know, from the same kind of feeling of, I'm not really, you're never really too sure why you're doing this. Yeah, you're yeah. there to liberate London, but... But you don't care. But you're not invested in it. Right, you don't have a reason to liberate London. Yeah, I mean... Besides the game the telling you to do so. Be, maybe, sort of, kind of, one doesn't, another one does... You yeah. know, it's it's very mishmashy. And Assassin's Creed is another kind of series that needs to know where its cut-off point is. Because at the end of the day, we need to eventually find all these pieces of Eden and there needs to be a full conflict between Templars and Assassins. And the series needs to go soon. Because it is yes. running out of stories it, ne- it wants to tell. Yep. And... It's getting to a stage now where I was invested in it up to a point, and now I'm just like, I will play the last game when I know it's the last game, where all of it comes together. Because how much of a nightmare is the last Assassin's Creed going to be where it's trying to tie in all of these loose ends? It probably I won't. I think they, they'll just keep riding this money train until it runs out. They'll keep making them until they just stop selling, and I doubt that there will be... There might be. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Put it that. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't have like one conclusive ending. That if they just dropped them one day, they're like, oh, okay, people stop buying Assassin's Creed. Ah, eh, we'll stop. And yeah, then... yeah. I mean, that wouldn't that wouldn't necessarily surprise me either. No. I'd be very sad if it happened, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, but if you're thinking of kind of experiences in terms of length, I mean, there are games that are really, really short that are really good. Like. Yeah. Walking simulators, stuff like Gone Home, Proteus, right. even sort of episodic ones like Tales of the Borderlands, Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, that kind yeah. of thing. That, but they're very sure and they have very directed content. Yeah, they know exactly what they want to achieve and they want what they want to get, what they want to do, which is something that I think, particularly AAA narratives and AAA development really suffer with they really well, you, suffer from kind of proper project management i guess yeah and i think it's it, it's both a problem with i, I it, i'm hesitant to say there's a problem with people who play video games in general it's like it oh i don't know how to say it but you you do have triple a developers like uncharted 2 i think it's like a fucking perfect game it's only like i don't know eight ten hours i don't want more I want that 8 to 10 hours, because that 8 to 10 hours is fucking perfect. Um, but I think a lot of people, I, I still see people on forums and on Reddit on Reddit all the time going, oh, this game wasn't long enough. And that's their criticism, that it wasn't that, oh, this content felt too rushed or something like that. It was just like, well, I didn't get enough gameplay for my money spent. And that I, I, I feel like time played is a factor not time well spent, it's just time spent. And people are like, oh yeah, I can spend 100 hours in this. I can spend 500 hours in this. But it's never a conversation about whether that 500 hours was spent well. It was just, oh, it's a plus if I can spend it at all. And I think that's a bad way of looking at it. Because then then it leads developers, oh, people want more content. They don't want more good content. They just want more content. So they just shove more crap in the game. They just shove more stuff to do. And people are like, oh, yeah, look at all the content. And that I, yeah, I really it's, don't it's think. Really, it's really a conversation of, about value. You yeah. Know? Like, like, here, like, here's a quick question for you guys. If you knew that a game was six hours long, but you knew the content was brilliant, how much would you spend on it? I would spend a full $60. Maybe. Eric? Depends what it is. I'm sorry, what was the question? If you knew that a 
that a six hour game would be an exceptional six hour game, how much money would you spend on it? Irrespective of genre, irrespective of whether um, it's it or AAA. I mean, if it's six hours, I mean, if it's really good and it has replay value, then yeah. I mean, when I, I could think of a good example when I played uh, uh, Arkham Asylum, the first Batman game from by Rocksteady. Uh, you know, I've been looking for that game for a very long time, a lot of people were, and I was not disappointed. And it's not like it was the whole open world thing. This is before Batman went open world with the city and stuff. And all you needed was the great campaign, uh, the ability to replay a game on a hard difficulty, and then this challenge modes, and that got, that kept me satisfied. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely see what Jeremy's saying about Blow Dead. I mean, when you, this is especially the case of open world games. Open world games have to yeah. just throw shit at you, right, to make it seem like it's bigger than it really is. Assassin's Creed is the master of doing that shit. I <laughs> played, I played, I have Unity, unfortunately. That was the first. <laughs> <laughs> game I got because it came with my Xbox and I was like, okay, I'll give it a chance. I'll play. Oh, it. did you start with Unity? Huh? Like, like, did you not? Did you you have no, played no, it? no, no? I, oh, I've been playing man. Assassin's Creed since Assassin's Creed Two. Okay. And, okay. Um, so I'm playing it, I'm playing it, and I'm just like, holy fuck! All, they, they like make the most petty, like, like, like little things. So like uh, a, a big chore, basically. Like you have to download a separate app if you want to open the other treasure chest. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, as stupid as it sounds, I actually downloaded the other app and actually completed all their stupid little mini games just so I could get all possible treasures so far. And then, um, you know, it's just the usual kill this guy, do, fetch this crap for someone, and it's in, the, oh, go reach this other uh, uh, checkpoint or lookout point that expends the map, which yeah. every like, it's an obligatory thing in open world games at this point. And. It's just, it feels stupid. Like, and I could see the same problem in Just Cause 3 and the same problem in the Mad Max game. Yeah. It's, people don't understand, don't know how to make an open world feel more organic now. A lot of times it's just like, fetch, 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 fetch quests. The it's, same thing with RPG games. Yeah. It's content at the service of content. Like, it yeah. doesn't, oh, getting these treasure chests will illuminate some part of the story. Or, oh, it does this. I don't know. It'll... It's make the story go this way. It's at the ser- it's not at the service of anything. You're not like a treasure hunter or anything. You're just like, yeah. oh, money. Oh, you need to get these. Go get these flags. Go collect all these it's feathers. It's there to waste time. Because you them. want feathers. Yeah. It's like, I don't care about these feathers. Why are you making me collect them? Well, because they're to be collected. It's like, who gives a fuck? Content just in there at the service of nothing is stupid. But people seem to like it. They're like, oh, look at all these collectibles. It's like... Fuck you. They're, they're useless. Demand real content, not like, just bloat. Yeah. I will say, like, here's an example of how to do that kind of, like, correctly. It, this this is back in Assassin's Creed 2. <clears throat> and they've it's pretty much been a staple in every single Assassin's Creed up until now. It's like, collect these different pieces in order to unlock the special armor, like the legendary Assassin armor, right? And that started way yeah. back in Assassin's Creed 2, the black Altair costume, whatever. And it felt cool because you had to go find these catacombs underground and do all kinds of crazy, like, uh, minigame uh, Indiana Jones style or, like, sorry, Prince of Persia style, like, you know, jumping on stuff and avoiding obstacles, puzzles. So that felt like you were doing something yeah. each, each time and you were earning something. At the very end, you were earning a very cool prize. Or, now, yeah. Yeah, or, like, the tombs in um, the not in the first Tomb Raider reboot. You didn't need to do them for the, for the service of the story, but it was it it, it they were interesting. They were interesting world building things. So like, oh, here are these ancient treasures, and they'll give you upgrades, and they'll help you along. You don't need them. You can get them if you want, um, and they will tell you something about the like the island and the culture of the, some of these ancient treasures. And it's interesting, and it's optional too. They don't make you do it to fulfill some kind of like arbitrary checklist it's not like oh you have to do these to go to the next part um yeah and i'm okay with like com- uh, no i'm not okay with completely optional bloat because it shouldn't be in there anyway and it shouldn't be counted as content um <laughs> yeah i mean the, the 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 flip side being i mean like what developers should be aiming for is quality with quantity on um, right 
Yeah, I mean, no one wants to feel, you know, cheapened. Like, what? I never played this game, but I, I, I don't hear anything good about it. The Order 1866 or whatever the fuck it yeah. was. And yeah. it's just like, oh, it, the graphics are so cool. This is the true next-gen experience. And it's just, like, super paper thin. It holds your hand throughout the entire campaign. And it's yeah. just like, wow, it looks good, like a shitty Gears of War ripoff. And then it, like, sets itself up for a sequel at the end or yeah. something. It's like, it's, it's like playing Fantastic Four, the game. Yeah, it just, it, it's... It, that I think is stupid too. Where it was also at the service of nothing. It was like, here, here's this cool interactive cutscene. It's really short, and that's not what I'm talking about about shorter experiences. Because that sounds like a terrible game. I haven't played it to be fair, so it, I don't know. Whatever. It's I've heard it's bad, and I'll like unilaterally I've heard it's bad. So I'll, yeah. Um, but that's yeah. That's not what I mean about cutting down to get less content. That's just the same thing where it's just four hours of bloated nothing it's it's just they took the bigger scale and shrunk it they didn't like cut the fat off they just made something bloated but they also made something four hours so yeah. it's it achieved nothing um i mean i'm playing fallout i'm i'm, I'm deeper now in fallout 4 and i'm noticing that you know a lot of crappy chore quests it's just like Hey, we want you to go clear out this town. Now this town, now this town. Go save these settlers. Hey, can you go find me this object and bring it back to me? And it's the same shit over and over again. But I guess so far it hasn't bothered me because Fallout is just you can do it. There's still a lot to do, and I do them because I can keep on unlocking new stuff. Um, and so far the 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 actual other quests that are more that have more of a plot to them. Uh, yeah. Or keeping me occupied, so it doesn't bother me too much. It's kind of what you expect in an RPG game. The problem being is if that's all there is, right? And if it's just, or if it's just that and the main quest, it's like, oh, if you want to do anything else, you have to do this bloated crap. Yeah. Um, and that's why I like The Witcher so much, is because the secondary quests felt like storylines, the uh, like independent storylines themselves. Yeah, I agree. That, that they that they helped build the world. They helped define characters. I, um, I'm thinking about that. Uh, there's a quest on Skellige where there's a witch who cursed her former lover's son or something. I forget. Uh, yeah, there was a witch and a dude, and they were former lovers, and he ditched her for some other lady. And he now has a kid, and the witch um, cursed his child. And at first, you think, "Oh, the witch is just a terrible person for casting the curse." Then you find out that she was justified because that guy was a dick, and that he totally screwed her over. So she cast this curse, and then he's just like, "Yeah, go murder her." And both of these people are terrible. They're terrible, terrible people, and you have to decide who you're gonna fuck over. This isn't. Oh, there's a good guy who you have to align with. Go kill bad guy, or that there was. They were both morally ambiguous people, and you had to make a decision. And no matter what decision you were gonna make, somebody got screwed unjustly. Like somebody got just totally fucked, and some yeah. bad person won. And that's interesting, and because that's the way that that world functioned, that's the way that everything was is that you occupy this morally gray space and this explored different parts of that space. And it was at service of the world. And, um, but it, what, from what you're saying in fallout four, like collecting, going, going and killing these guys that doesn't, it's at the service of nothing. It's at the service of, Oh, isn't it fun shooting people? It's like, uh, if you have really deep game mechanics and you really want to show off like, Oh, here's do this cool thing. Like, Vanquish. Did you ever? Did you guys ever play that? Vanquish. What's, Vanquish. What's that? It was for the PS3 and 360. You play. Um, I I have vague recollections of playing. You're in like I've a mech suit, and you like slide all over the place, and you can like slow down. Oh time. yeah, yeah. Now I remember. I saw. I remember yeah, yeah. seeing that. I was like, yeah. That looks like it would get old very quickly. Like that game. The story sucked. It didn't make any sense. It was stupid, but it was fun. <laughs> like the mechanics were. It was a very simple game, but I really, really liked it because it was just, it was really flashy and, but, but at the same time, it felt 
like it made sense. I could really get behind it, and I love Vanquish. I haven't played it in a while, but um, that's something where the mechanics were the driving force behind the game. So I was like, okay, I can excuse all this dumb crap. This story doesn't make sense. I don't care because I just want to play the thing. And as long as the story functioned and it wasn't just a total piece of garbage, I didn't care because I came for the gameplay. So I think that one worked. Um, but... Uh, if, if you uh, do, you guys have anything, uh, any closing thoughts about bloated games? I think we've talked it almost to death. Uh, be more like Batman: Arkham Asylum and Witcher Three, less like Assassin's Creed Unity and any other Ubisoft open world game. <laughs> Laura, any closing thoughts on that? Topic? Stop with the bloat. Yes. Stop with the bloat. I agree. Stop with the bloat. <laughs> that, that, that pretty much sums it up. Now, to keep on this hate train, um, I, I I personally am fed by my own hatred, so I love talking about things that are bad. Uh, just to close out, let's talk about some of our most hated games. Um, so well, any, like the worst games you've ever played, uh, something that you just totally hate, even if other people really like it. Um, just to give some short examples, some of my most hated games are uh, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. That game is pretty universally panned as a terrible game. Um, I hated the game Resonance of Fate. I don't know if you've ever played that game. Anybody? No? Okay. No, I have not. It's like a JRPG yep. that for 20 hours, it had no story. Then that I, I don't know if it ever picks up a story because I stopped playing it because it's fucking terrible. And the gameplay didn't make any sense, and it didn't uh, do a good job at all of conveying to you how to play the game. It was a confusing mess. Um, I really didn't like Borderlands 2, mostly because I played it by myself, and I felt it was a terrible single-player game. I can understand why people like it. I personally hated it, but whatever. And Secrets of the Magic Crystals is a horrible game. I don't think it's supposed to be good, but it's like a horse like training simulator and it's bad and i think it's like a joke game that people give each other as a uh, steam gifts and i got it once and i tried to play it for like 15 minutes and i was like this is the worst piece of shit ever i see why this is a joke gift <laughs> um have you have any of you guys played secret of the magic crystals <laughs> i have no idea what that is i i have did you like it? <laughs> I, I, I don't think I would not put it on my list of most hated games in the world, though. I no. mean, it wasn't great, but Jesus Christ, like no, I, I think it hate is a strong. Bad. I think hate is a strong word, and I don't actually hate it. I just think it's stupid and it's fun to laugh at. This like it's a game about like horses and unicorns called Secrets, Secret of the Magic Crystals. It's just kind of like a ridiculous game that exists, and it's fun well, to laugh at. Okay, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> but, but, you, but just, you know, hate, hate, hate's a pretty strong word. Yeah, I that's mean, fair. I mean, I can say that I hate at least all of mine. So, you know. Yeah, okay. That's the, I think that's the only one on my list that I don't actually... No, Aquaman is also fun to laugh at. That's a, just a fucking horrible game. but And I probably would hate it, but I really do strongly dislike Resonance of Fate and Borderlands 2. Um, but yeah, those are my, those are my most disliked that um, I could think of. So mine, I mean, I don't hate, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who don't believe in like, in hating games because they're a form of art. I'm one of those. So for me to actually find something that pisses me off to a stage where I'm just like, fuck this shit, who the fuck designed this, um, is difficult, but I have found three. <laughs> so so Sonic DX is a heaping pile of shit that should just never have existed in the first place. What was it for? I don't even remember it, that game. I think it wasn't for N64. I think it was Dreamcast. I think you're right. Um but it was broken. It was stupid. It was completely you know just everything was wrong with it like 
there there wasn't anything that was right with it. Like everything everything was wrong with it. Levels were broken. The plots didn't make sense. The voice acting was shit. It was like it was the beginning of like the semi open world era of Sonic, which is just fucking stupid to begin with, right? Because it's Sonic. Why the fuck do you need it to be open world? Oh man, my friend will have some words with you. He uh, he's a big Sonic fan. He well, would... <laughs> well, then, well, 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 I then, agree with you. But... Well then, he, well then, he can fight me for it, right? Yeah, Absolutely, go. we can. We we will fight over it. But the fact that Sonic is open world at all is a crock of shit and just shouldn't be allowed. Anyway, so. I, I yeah, I'm quite passionate about this. So even like even when you were going into like individual characters to do their missions, like there's one with a cat that I can't remember his name because I've repressed it because obviously I'm that traumatized from it. And you're trying to get froggy, you're trying to fish for a frog, which makes no fucking sense because you don't fish for frogs. But that whole mechanic of even completing that side of the game is completely fucking broken. Doesn't work, and the frog just swims away from you because he's a frog and not a fish. Anyway, yeah. So I'm I'm very angry that the fact that that it exists. I, I'm not happy about it at all. Okay, so the next one is more as a point of kind of conscience, I suppose, and it's not for the reasons everybody will think because I'm a girl when I say the title of this game, but the title of the game is Catfight. What is that? I've never heard of that. It's a Mortal Kombat clone. Oh! Uh... That, that is all about kind of half-naked women just pulling each other's hair. <laughs> that's and, Dead or Alive? No, no, no. Like, I... That, that's the thing. I have no beef with Dead or Alive. I love Dead or Alive. Because it does its shit properly. If you're going to, to go along, down along the lines of kind of the Dead or Alive side of comedy slash kind of what Dead or Alive is, at least do it properly, which is what Dead or Alive is doing. Catfight is just a really bad clone that doesn't work well, that's poorly pixelized, <laughs> and doesn't even have, like, the proper mechanics that it's trying to copy, and nothing, everything is overly sexualized and isn't even hot, and, like, it it distresses me on, <laughs> like, a lot of levels. But if you're going to go to the, if you're going to go to the point of, you know, Doing something. Do it dead or alive. Do it well. Make it so that the characters are hot. Make it so that it's stupid. Make it so that it's funny. You know? Yeah, make it so it's something. Make it so it's something. <laughs> Don't half arse copy something, then use sprites that are unattractive to basically pull another chick's hair because, yeah, that's how all women fight. I'm sorry, I'm a black belt. I can kick the crap out of pretty much anybody. That is not how women fight. I did okay. not know you're a black belt. That's cool. Yeah. So, so <laughs> she you go know. fight the developers. Oh, believe me, I would. Like, I would. I would kick the kick the shit out of them. Anyway, but but just if you're going to copy something, right? Copy it with a bit of uniqueness to it, because there isn't any such a thing as originality, right? But if you're going to go down along that lines, do it right. Like, do what Dead or Alive do. I don't take any offense to what Dead or Alive is. I enjoy what Dead or Alive is because it's funny and because it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I can respect that and I can enjoy that, like, even as, you know, as a heterosexual woman, right? Right. I can enjoy that for what it is because I think it's funny and because I don't take it so seriously. Because it's not even taking itself seriously, so how can you? It's not taking itself seriously. I mean, you know, there's this whole genre for that kind of thing, and I'm aware it's a niche and it exists for whatever reason you might choose, but the fact is, it sells because it's obviously doing something right. Don't do this fucking crap of shit that is catfight. <laughs> and, and have it like it is some sort of contender where you're blending two genres together. No, you're just making one piling heap of crap. Don't do it. Stop. <laughs> like, just, just stop it. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm very angry. Today. Oh, it's fun. Hate is fun. Hate I is... like hate. Can we not just title this episode "Hate is Fun"? It's the hate cast. Yeah, it is the hate cast. Um, 2016 hate cast. Right. Every and... one of my episodes will be a hate cast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my final one is, and this is where it's going to be slightly controversial, right? But it is the Tetris. 
that EA and EA and I can't remember. I'll look it up for you. Keep talking about it. Thanks. And they like the ultimate question, as Jim Sterling so poignantly stated, is how do you fuck up Tetris? <laughs> like how? How do you fuck up Tetris? Tetris is easily has to be one of the most iconic video games in the world. Like, everybody knows what Tetris is, even if you don't game. How can you make something run on half a processor and a double-A battery and then get to 2016 and have something that can't run on an i7? How can you make Tetris broken? Tetris, You can't fuck up Tetris, and yet these AAA developers have managed to fuck up Tetris by creating something like Tetris Ultimate Edition that doesn't even work on a high-spec computer. How? How do you do that? Game Boys! Like, technology that is 20 years old has managed to develop a better, more kind of cohesive experience. Like, I don't know if you guys have played Tetris for, um, on mobile or I anything. Te- Tetris Blitz or whatever the fuck it is now. Yeah, I have, Just- yeah. Just stop with the bollocks. Seriously. Just give me my Tetris. And the same goes to you, Windows 10, for charging for Solitaire. Oh, I'm, yeah. I forgot I'm about looking, that. I'm looking at you, Microsoft. I'm looking at you. Stop that shit. It's not funny. Solitaire has been free since I was learning how to program in DOS. Like, <laughs> like... Seriously, why would you pa- why would you charge for a subscription? How do you fuck up Tetris and how do you fuck up Solitaire? By not doing what Tetris and Solitaire are meant are meant to be played. Like we'll just start buying decks of cards if you're going to be twats about it. And <laughs> we're just gonna start returning to ROMs and to you know, our old cartridges for proper Tetris experiences if you guys can't get your shit together. Which I don't understand how, you know, the people who can create other fantastic working games that have, you know, 60 frames per per second and look absolutely stunning can make Tetris stutter on an i7. I... Like, do, do, I wonder do AAA developers understand that that's not, like, that is the biggest paradox that you will ever find in your entire life. How can you create something visually stunning and then break Tetris? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> and the fact that, like, they're charging subscriptions and 20 euro for, for Tetris, I, you need to give me some reason not to just open a web browser. But the dummies will pay for it. They'll say, oh, Tetris on phone. I will buy. And then they do it. I mean, I don't, I mean, look, I downloaded the free version of Tetris Blitz <laughs> or my iPhone, right? Realized it wasn't Tetris. Swore at it for a bit. Looked for the normal mode. Couldn't find it. And wondered, why do you need to change the formula of Tetris. Like, we spent a lot of this cast talking about innovation and stuff that needs to be changing to keep things fresh. But I think you're confusing the fact that there is no narrative to Tetris. Right. There is no narrative. But how can you add microtransactions to Tetris in another way? You need microtransactions. Don't even get me (laughs) I need to buy my green Tetris block. (laughs) Oh, could you imagine if they started? You need you know, to unlock. You, you, I'm you sorry, can get... you can't complete this stack because you need to buy the the purple tea piece. Oh yeah, no. Can you that like that will happen? And the day that will happen, I will quite literally. I don't know. I will send glitter to EA, and they will be cleaning it up for the rest of their lives. Like, <laughs> like, I don't think they understand that that's not how like premium market infrastructure like even works and oh no i will i will end up like talking for another hour and a half about how you know, people make poor choices and it affects the rest of us and stop doing it people just... buy dumb things i don't know why people buy things like that but well uh, eric give, okay. give us some of your hate <laughs> sure fill me with your hatred i'll join the dark side with you all right Excellent. um so 
I don't know. I've actually had a hard time coming up with a list because I don't know. I, it's hard to remember a time where I had that much of a bad experience, but I can think of a few. And uh, I'll start off with Hitman Absolution. I was looking forward to this game for a very long time because I've played Hitman Blood Money like way too many times. I've beaten that game way too many times. That game has like a lot of replay value. And it's because it's, it's an open world game. I, I, I mean, not open world, but like it's an open ended game, it's non linear. Uh, if you, to this day, I'm watching videos of people beat the levels of Hitman Blood Money in ways I couldn't even didn't even begin to think about. Like that's how ridiculous, like how fun in that game it was. And it's like a 2005, 2006 game, something like that. Yeah. And so Absolution finally comes up. We get a you know, at the time like next gen, like, like Xbox 360, PS3, PC uh, version of Hitman, and. It comes out in the I, we watch the demo. I mean, a lot of people watch demos, and the graphics look amazing, and it looks has some really promising features. And then when you actually play it, by the second level, I realized it was very wrong, and that was the disguise mechanic, and the fact that this entire game is super linear. They added checkpoints now. They added checkpoints to a game series that's supposed to be fucking like open ended, and um. And so, like, what ended up happening was just, like, it, you were just basically playing a glorified cover shooter in, in a lot, in a lot yeah. of ways. And uh, w- when you wore a disguise this time around, it worked off something called an instinct meter, where you have to use your instinct meter to in order to make your disguise work around people who wear the same disguise as you do. So if you're wearing a cop uniform and you happen to walk by other cops, according to this game's logic... All cops know each other by first name basis and will immediately recognize you if you don't use your instinct meter. What kind of load of shit is that? It kind of made the entire disguise mechanic completely useless. Whereas in the other game, they would only get like suspicious of you if you found a dead corpse or you did something wrong. Yeah. And then they would get suspicious. You didn't have to keep fucking like using your meter up. Because once you use your meter up, you're fucked. Especially in higher difficulties where you had like very little of it or none, none at all. So, like, it made the entire stealth mechanic or blending in the social stealth mechanic useless to me. So, I shit you not, by a second level, it took place in a hotel. I was just blowing people apart with a shotgun because I just, I just got tired <laughs> of hiding. I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm not hiding anymore. I just, just killed everyone and then reached my objective. And it was at that point I decided I hated this game. I sold it immediately. <laughs> and, yeah. But luckily, the new Hitman, it seems, from what I can tell that they understand the frustration from the fans and they're very much referencing more of Blood Money. And so I'm looking forward to a new Hitman game. Uh, this next game was kind of my biggest disappointment of 2015, and, and it, but it's well, it's well received by most people, except for PC gamers. Batman Arkham Knight. And uh, yeah, I really don't have a lot of good things to say about this game. I was another game that I was super hyped for and it being Rocksteady making their final Batman game supposed to be the end-all, be-all, has all the best features to all the other games have, right? You have all the sidekicks you can play as. There's, like, a... You can switch between two characters when you fight. Uh, bigger and bigger, you know, Gotham City, a Batmobile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm playing it, and I realized just how fucking superficial it is. We were just discussing earlier about bloated. This is, like, the definition of bloated. All the side quests are literally the same stupid shit over and over again. It's like, go chase down this car, go go stop, uh, go jump Firefly on this one, go save these firefighters here, blah, 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 do this mission with Nightwing, and it's just like, you guys don't even try anymore. <laughs> and the story was horrible. Holy shit. And anyone who thinks this game has a good story, I will fight you. You're not, you're not a true Batman fan. In my <laughs> you know nothing about Batman. It's just like, uh, I shit you not, Rock said he lied to their fans in order to promote this game. They straight up lied. They're like, no, 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 the, the Arkham Knight, the main villain, is an original character, not based on the comics. And guess who he fucking is? He's Jason Todd, the second Robin, who died. Like, oh, God, you, you, guys are, you guys are killing me here with your originality. So breathtaking how smart and clever you fuckers are. And then... <laughs> And then oh. the worst part is the worst part is is they bring back Joker for the fourth time. No, yeah, for Wait, the fourth they did. time. And it, he's supposed to be dead. He died in Arkham City. He comes back as a hallucinogenic character for the rest of the game. Oh he no, he is. He has more lines than the villain. He has more lines than Scarecrow. Oh. It's just like I love Mark Hamill. I love the Joker. 
but if Rocksteady has such a childish understanding of Batman and doesn't think he has other villains that need more exploring, that they they shouldn't have been making this this last game in the first place, as far as I'm concerned. It's so weak. And the Batmobile, and people will tell you how horrendous the Batmobile is. At first, it's cool. I got, I got the Batmobile. I can literally bulldoze through, you know, walls and shit. I'm a badass, you know. I can go to tank mode. And then you realize that two-thirds of the game is you in a Batmobile. Like, do you, do you want to open this door? Use a Batmobile. Every single boss fight is a Batmobile. There's the stealth Batmobile sequences. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> how the hell do you... What kind of dumb idea is that? And then... And then uh, it comes to a point, one of the most offensive parts to me was Deathstroke gets put back in this game. And I'm like, oh, hell yeah, Deathstroke is back. I, I fought him in Arkham Origins. We had a cool boss fight, and he, he's back for vengeance. When you fight him, you have a fucking tank battle with Deathstroke. <laughs> what? <laughs> when the, the DC Universe is uh, world's greatest assassin versus the world's greatest like detective slash martial artist fight, I don't think of a fucking rally. tank battle. Okay, and uh, I was so angry just playing that part, and yeah, and the the story is just weak. I could go on forever how terrible how the, every part of this plot, just script writing wise, it goes against what 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 they teach you in an amateur like storytelling class. Show don't tell, have character yeah. development. Oh my god, it was just horrendous. There were there was no stakes in this game. When you have a villain. You want to force your main character to have lose something, sacrifice, blah, blah, blah. And they killed off Barbara Gordon pretty early in the game. I was like, oh, my God, they killed Barbara Gordon. How the hell did they do that? Why would they do that? And then you find out it was another fear toxin hallucinogen. No, Batman, you were just hallucinating. She never died. So what you're telling me is at no point in time has Batman actually lost anything at all. There was no, nothing. He didn't lose anything. None of his friends died. He didn't die. Uh, it's just it's stupid. I just don't understand uh, how people just thought that this game was amazing, and I don't know, it pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> and that the DLC was horrible, because every other Batman game up until that point, you had free challenge maps. You had a lot of challenge maps. You had a lot of content to begin with. And there's some some here and there you download, like oh okay, I'll, I'll download Nightwing or I'll download Robin, and maybe two or three more extra maps, right? No, this one gave you a total of four regular combat maps. The rest were shitty Batmobile racing tracks. And then in uh, a rock say, it's like, yeah, this is great. Now we're going to make you pay for the rest of them. I was like, holy fuck. I was <laughs> like, wow, this is the, the biggest slap in the face I've ever had in the game, like in recent memory. But that's just me on Batman. I could go on for it. I actually was going to write an article about it because I literally could write a book about this. <laughs> uh, moving on. Now, this game is probably, I will say it's much worse than the previous two I just mentioned. It's, have you guys ever heard of Two Worlds? Yeah, I've heard of Two I Worlds have heard of two. two. Oh, God. Um, the first one. I heard the second one, surprisingly, was good. But the first one, my friend back in... We were, this is like back in high school. My friend had it, and he's like, dude, you have to come over to my right now. Play this shitty RPG game with me right now. I'm like, uh, okay. So I'll come over, and holy crap. You, you guys ever play RuneScape? Uh... I knew people that played it. I never played it. This is this is the shittier version of RuneScape, but on Xbox 360. Oh my god! It's the graphics are appalling. They're so bad. The it, it's so broken. Things are glitching as you walk. The dialogue sounds like if I was just reading off a script and I happened to be a 12 year old. Like it was fucking terrible. I was like, what in the world? It was so bad that my friend started a Facebook group just dedicated to hating this game. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I didn't I didn't play it any more than like say twenty minutes of it. But the novelty of, of it being it's so shitty that you have to experience it for yourself, like watching the room. Yeah, Tommy Wise out the room. Yeah, and yeah, that was that was really bad. But that was like um, that's like Aquaman. Did you ever play that? I've heard of Aquaman. It's game. fucking I've never actually played it. Awful. There's no there's cutscenes, but instead of actual like dialogue or animation, it's comic it's still comic book panels that come up on the screen with like dialogue bubbles. <laughs> Those are the cutscenes. And then the gameplay is so broken. You can just like swim through textures. There's like there's buildings that submarines will just drive through. And the only thing that's well animated is Aquaman's hair. Like, everything else looks like shit, but then his hair is just this lovely flowing mane that it's just it, it's very lively and bubbly. But everything else is just static and looks terrible. 
Um, it kind of reminds me of that Super Nintendo. Oh, sorry, the Superman sixty four game. Yeah, it's sort of like that. <laughs> it's that level of bad, where it's just nothing makes sense and everything is broken. It's just total garbage. Um, so just one last game, and this wasn't like super bad. I think it has more to do with me as a, as a player, uh, just not liking how it felt. But uh, UFC's Undisputed Three. Now this came up before when before UFC joined with EA. This is back when uh, Dana White still fucking hated EA uh, for not like I don't know something about the gaming rights. He, there was a big feud going on, and I, I bought this in like this is like my freshman year or sophomore year in college. I forget. I just bought it. It was cheap. I'm like, oh cool. I, I'm a big fan of MMA. I want to play this game. I bring it over to one of my friends' dorm and play it, and. I I lose immediately to someone like no, well, none of us have played this game before but and I well I was playing it and I I the controls were awful I was just like there's a dedicated button to like punching and kicking whatever very little variations between striking and then the grappling mechanics which is I hate okay this is just true, this is just true in real life I hate I hate grappling in real life I'm just not good at it 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 tastes very exhausting I didn't know how I know how important it is but I just don't like doing it. And I'm playing in the game, and the controls just don't make a whole lot of sense. I'm trying to work my head around it. And then I, after I lost a game against my friend, I was thinking to myself, I don't want to do this for six more hours. So I just immediately returned it. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I had a lot more fun playing Fight Night Round 3, Fight Night 4, Round 4, Fight Night Champion, those, those boxing games, because those controls are so pinpoint and you could control every angle of a strike of the of the punches you throw. So granted because it's a boxing game and you don't have to keep in mind the fact that MMA does kickboxing with, you know, uh grappling, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But I wish more MMA games had that sort of control, that fluidity based upon it. It's a physics based uh contact. So if I threw a hook at someone and he happened to be too close, my hook would actually wrap around his head. So like things like that. But it's whatever. Um, I'm sure as time goes on, uh, things will improve. Yeah. But those are my games. <laughs> Any anybody have any closing thoughts about our, our hate cast? It was a <laughs> it was a very hate filled episode, I guess. It, it it really was. That I don't was know what I I don't know what's up with everybody. You it know, was great. it's a, it's a I, Sunday. We should all be more chill than this, but apparently we're not. I quite enjoyed it. I always like ranting about horrible things. So it was a good time for me. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any closing thoughts? Or, uh, are we going to wrap this up? I I think I am good. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, that's another. That's it for uh, this episode of the Nubus Podcast. Remember uh, to give us five stars, thumbs up, or uh, Eric, a big old kiss if you like what we do. Or if you yes, hate us. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or else I'm going to have to do it. No, I'm just kidding. I won't do that. Uh, hey, 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 you volunteered for it, buddy. You've signed up for it no, now. No, why did I say that? I immediately <laughs> regret my decisions. Um, or if you just hate us and want us dead, you should probably find something else more, more worthwhile to do than hate some weirdos on the internet. Like, you could hate games like we did for the past hour and 15 minutes. Um, yep. uh, that's That wraps it about up. Uh, guys, you want to tell us where everybody can find you on Twitter and the Facebooks or where wherever you want to be found. Um, so I'm found at, at Miss Laura Fagan on Twitter and you can read my stuff on the newest. You can find me on uh, WordPress, dankcushlord.wordpress.com <laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can find me at at gbits on Twitter and too many games on Tumblr. Uh, thank you for listening. This was the newest podcast.